Hip Smith is the name that he was using uh, at the time that he was arrested in Baltimore after he had abducted his child. So, uh, Tamara, to you first. If, if you were the defense attorney here, is this one of those things where you might want, I mean, ordinarily you probably don't want all these aliases to get into the case for, for a client of yours. Right. But is this one where you might think differently and you might say, you know what, let me throw this all out here so these jurors can get a sense of what kind of problem this guy really has? What do you think? I think in, in this case it's possibly a good idea. I mean, not if they're using this insanity defense, mm -hmm. but in the general in the, in the general case, I, I would put him on because remember, he is somebody for 20 some years who preyed on people's false beliefs. I do not think he was insane. I think that the fixed and false beliefs uh -huh. were those of others. He had seven <coughs> aliases that other people believed him to be this person. So it wasn't him, it's everybody else. We're all the idiots that met him along the way that believed him. And bought into him. And, and, and use that man and his talent to play into the jury. He studied film, he gets it. He knows how to act, he knows yeah. what to say, he knows exactly what to he, do to persuade this jury, yeah. and that's what they should have he done. Is quick. Uh, some quick reintroductions in our studios here, criminal defense attorney Tamara Holder, and also Wally Zines, retired NYPD detective, former hostage negotiator. Let me get you guys involved in some of the discussions we just had, all right? Tamara, you first. Again, given what you know about this case and all the circumstances, are you surprised that they didn't work out some sort of deal that kept them from going through this whole trial? Not necessarily. I think that this is a man who doesn't believe that he should be charged and he's not willing to work out a deal. I don't think it has anything to do with the five-year probation term. Actually, I think that that's, that that's not the reason at all. He's not listening to that. He is listening to the fact that he would be entering a plea of guilty and he didn't do anything wrong. I am not going to accept guilt for something that I did not do do and he's going to be a very or was probably a very difficult client and so as an attorney the only thing you can do is advise your client and say look look dude if you go to trial and you lose you're going down or take this and plea. probably get, buying yourself some additional time because as you know most times if you turn down a deal and you say I'm gonna roll the dice and go to trial and you get nicked on trial usually the judge is not gonna say okay I'll give you the same deal we offered you before right? they don't and and in a case like this I'm sure the judge knows some of the facts maybe there was a conference in the back uh, you know a, a conference where the both at attorneys both sides talk to the judge about working out a plea so the judge knows a lot of things and knows that if this guy doesn't take a plea and he goes to trial and he loses I am going to bring him down and a lot of judges do that a lot of judges punish the client for going to trial instead of taking a very reasonable yeah. it looked like it was a very reasonable plea sure the idea is you, you you put us through all this time and energy effort fine you have your right to a fair trial but I don't you don't have a right for me to give you the same good deal you were going to get before. and they never do they yeah. never the judges never do that rarely so Tamara you first if I can usually as a defense attorney what you're fighting Fighting over is the facts. You know, right. usually the prosecution says this. What happens? The defense says, No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, wait. The, the, it, it's, we got a different version here, or slightly different version. But in this case, when you have an insanity defense, as a defense, basically you're just sort of surrendering the facts. Not necessarily. I mean, the first thing is when you when you do your opening statement, you say the case is about this. This is what we are going to show you. Uh, is is our theory of the case but in the insanity defense or at least in this case you don't want them to believe the, the prosecution's version of the facts and then you also want them to believe that your client is insane right. but an interesting fact is that only one percent of all cases actually are successful in the insanity, insanity defense, defense. Yeah. and one percent only Plead insanity, so it's one percent of one percent. It's just a minuscule portion. A minuscule per portion, and yep. and you know us in America, we think that it's that it's a larger portion because those are the cases that are on TV. Well, get some, I mean, after John Hinckley's case, it, where John Hinckley shot President Reagan and, and wounded others, and there was this outcry, as you know, he's found not guilty by reason of insanity. And people are saying this is terrible. We can't let the system happen. The reality, as you said rarely ever brought up and rarely ever successful. Right, yeah. right. It's very, very, very rare. The, the, uh, the other thing inside of that courtroom